there are two subtopics that we'll, I will um, give you for the introduction. Why we should learn this uh, before we go into like blockchain technologies. Okay, the first um, topic we will discuss about uh, introduction to distributed systems. Why distributed systems? And wh what is the relation between you know blockchain? Why, why we should discuss this kind of topic before we go into the blockchain technology um, itself? Okay, so yeah, this is part of my lecture in Universitas Indonesia, distributed system course. Um, so basically, what's distributed system? That's very much the first question. I don't know if you have uh, learned about this in second year of study, computer science study. I think most of the university introduced this kind of uh, course in their third or fourth um, year in their university. So basically, um, this is this is the definition from Professor Leslie Lamport. This is one of the founding fathers of, you know, we just say it. Uh, he is the one that uh, founding the Byzantine general problems that will become the big one of the blockchain technology. So uh, Professor Lamport said, the CB system is a system in which the failure of a computer you didn't even know existed can render your own computer unusable. So instead of having one computer, we have we will have thousands, millions of computer, and you even didn't know that those computers are, even exist. And those computers, the failure of one of, or two of those computers will make your computer uh, go bad or something. So basically that's the idea of this review system. So this implies that there are multiple computers communicating via computer network, well, simply say the internet, and those computers are trying to, you know, do some tasks all together. You know, in simple cases, uh, there are computers that provide providing some kind of um, website deployment, and then your computer access those server and some kind of browsers uh, show you the pages of the website or something. When you open your browsers and you open some kind of website, at least it involves two different computers for doing some kind of stuff. Your computer and also the web server one. So that's, uh, those kind of uh, examples are um, one of the cases in distributed systems. Okay, so uh, computers here uh, always, we, 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 we always say that nodes and, and these nodes is not only computers, but um, mobile phones, smartphone, anything that can be used for computational activity can be uh, counted as nodes. Okay, uh, well, this is another recommended reading. If you take similar courses in University of Malaya or anywhere, well, this is these are the uh, recommended readings for, for the course itself. Okay. So the next question is, uh, why do we make a distributed system? Why we need to make our system distributed? Why we don't have? Why we uh, should feel enough with only one computer in, in our house and do some? many things in our um, computer. Okay. Uh, one of the thing is, many cases, it is inherently distributed to make sure that you can communicate with others. Well, of course, you need some kind of technology that connect you and your colleagues um, located in different geographies, different countries, and so on and so forth. And because of that, this kind of system is inherently distributed. But we should design um, the communication system as a distributed system, of course. Second one, we need this kind of distributed system because we want reliability. Well, this I think this is one of the terminology that probably you just heard today, or maybe you, you haven't you have heard um, this reliability terminology before. But simply, reliable mean. If you cannot get service from one computer, you can get from another one. So if you can have a website accessible through one kind of web server, and then those kind of server is down, well, you cannot access the web server at, the, um, at that time, right? So in this case, if we make those web server distributed, at least when one web server is down, you can still get service from another one. So that's called reliable. 
third one, for better performance. Well, uh, they are saying that if you uh, do it uh, alone, you can go some kind of um, uh, distance, but if you do it all together, you can go further. Well, this is the same thing as computational task. If one computer can do like a little bit of task, imagine if um, thousands of computers do the same old task together. So we will have better performance in terms of computational performance, of course. The similar thing with that kind of analogy, uh, if we only have one computational um, you know, machine, we probably will have, we, we will kind of um, solving a little bit of a small problem, but if we got millions or thousands of computers all working to solve the same problem together, well, at this point, we will have, you know, we, we can solve a much, much more bigger problem than before. So, that's the reason why we, we should have distributed system. But the second question should be when we should not have distributed system. Okay, so in this slide, we will learn what are the problems that can arise from this kind of um, you know, architecture. Well, because distributed system involving um, multiple computers, multiple nodes, so there should be communication line. And this line, this communication line may fail. And we might not even know if it is failed. We didn't know until the system itself cannot be used at all. It means probably some kind of communication line failed. The process, the second one, the process, the process in one of uh, one or more nodes scattered around the systems may crash. And again, we might not know if one of two nodes within this kind of system crashes. We didn't know because you know there are thousands probably computers involving in this kind of system. We cannot um, have full knowledge of all of the nodes within the system. And all this kind of either communication line or the nodes uh, crashing thing can happen non-deterministically. It means we cannot predict when those kind of um, uh, crash or failure, failure can happen. So one thing to summarize this slide is uh, the failure can happen. So the, the, the biggest problem in distributed system is we, we have to assure that whenever there is this kind of failure, either in communication line or nodes or something else, we should make our system uh, keep usable and running as normal. So this terminology is called fault tolerance. We have to tolerate the failure, one or another. Well, if the whole system is um, shut down, maybe we, we it's still failure anyway. But if like a fraction of the system failed uh, throughout the um, the time, we should ensure that the system cannot or still still go still going as and usable as usual. Okay, so this is hard and non-trivial. And compared to what you have done uh, in your first year, probably like writing single program in your own computer, this kind of um, design much, much more harder because you have to ensure that all the program can run uh, nicely, correctly in all of the nodes through the system. Okay. Anyway, if you have any question before we, I mean, uh, anytime you got a question, either you can open your mic or you can put something in the chat box. That's okay for me. Okay, let's see the uh, illustration of how two nodes com uh, communicate each other. So let's uh, assume that there are two nodes, two computers. They want to communicate to each other. Node one, node I will send a message and node J. This kind of activity is a simple, uh, you know, communication at a time between two computers, sending the message, simple. We as human also, we communicate by sending message to our friends, to our colleagues. So that's the idea. You, you, you cannot expect your friends to understand you if you just uh, stay silent and, you know, expect others to understand you. Well, that's nonsense, right? You have to communicate your idea. You have to communicate things that you feel so others will uh, understand you. 
Uh, but in reality, to make sure that this kind of nodes, this kind of system can communicate to each other, there are um, much, much more aspect. There are some complex scenario, including first, they can sending the message through internet. Well, this kind of internet thing, if we discuss in one different course, it will take one whole semester to discuss how the computer can send message to each other. So basically that's the idea. The, 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 the media, the medium for sending the message itself is very complex and non-trivial property. The second one, how can we deliver the message? Can we deliver the message through the air? So the cables or what? So there are physical communication involved in this. Signal, electric things, radio waves, and so on and so forth. So basically the media in sending this kind of message in is much, much more complex than we thought. And um, I think in computer science, we don't, um, learn this kind of science in deep. And I think I believe some, 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 some courses in electrical engineering or telecommunication engineering will, will discuss this kind of um, aspect. But okay, let's see, let's go on. All right, this is one of the example. Uh, because in previous all, there, there, there are there is example of hard drives in a van. So basically, uh, this is the, the, the device. So Amazon provide um, some kind of hard drives, big, very, very big hard drives that can be moved, but not through the internet, literally in, in the briefcase through the um, fan car. Probably. All right, because we want to send a message through some kind of media, there are several terminology that we have to understand. The first one is latency, and the second one is bandwidth. What is latency? Latency is the time, the time needed to deliver the message. Uh, why should we learn about the latency? Why we should understand about the latency? Because if we use different media, we will have different time. If you are sending message from Kuala Lumpur to somewhere it's still in Malaysia, probably it will be faster than you are sending message from Kuala Lumpur to Jakarta probably. That's common sense, right? So that's called latency. If we are using fiber optic, for example, for our network, it will be much, much more faster than we use probably DSL cables. What are those fiber optic what is, um, DSL cables? You will learn probably later in computer networks course. But the thing is, uh, you have to understand that if we use different media to, to, to send the message, it will have different latency. Second one is bandwidth. Okay, if latency is the time needed to deliver the message, the bandwidth is the road in which we will use those for sending the message. If we use bigger road, bigger channel, we can deliver the message uh, much, much more faster compared to if we use probably like smaller bandwidth, smaller channel, smaller road. So in terms of latency, we want the latency as small as much as possible. But in terms of bandwidth, we want, we want it to be much, much more bigger, as big as possible. Got the idea, right? The latency is the time, and the bandwidth is the channel, is the road, the capacity to deliver the message. Okay. You can see that we can have different latency, and we, we can have different bandwidth. So in terms of delivering the message itself, the problem is much, much more complex non trivial Okay, let's go deep into the actual example of how the distributed system actually works. Well, let's say there are two, um, well, one kind of activity you are doing, you are, we are always doing, uh, buying something online, for example. So there are online shops and there are our um, client. And actually, the, the online shop itself didn't manage the payment itself. So the online shop need to access some kind of service provided by financial institution, the payment service, Visa, MasterCard, or banking system, and so on and so forth. So let's see how the online shop communicate with the payment service uh, in 
managing you know the transaction the financial transaction okay for example um well let's just assume that someone has bought um some kind of clothes in this kind of online shop the online shop asks us the credit card number and then the online shop will send requests to the payment service to charge those credit card with the amount of the our transaction and then the payment service said success and after that the online shop will send it close to us right simple as that well the problem in here is the program in online shop has different program i mean the, the payment service has different program than online shop if online shop has one program the payment service also has another program so there are two software involved in here two different programs so basically the simple thing that we can interpret from those activities uh, i believe you guys have learned about method probably or function right when you uh, write some code you will put uh, some kind of um, action in and bundle it into one method or one function. And then whenever you need those activity being done, you will call those method or you will call those function. In this case, the online shop will call some kind of method, but this method will be executed not in the online shop server. It will be executed in the payment service server. So you call something that is not existed in your own computer, but you call something that is located in different node or different server. So let's see here. In just the simple uh, program of how the financial transaction is, is being done. So set card number, expiry date, CPC, well, that's the credit card thingy, right? And then see here, payment service, process payment. There's this method, process payment. I believe it also makes sense that the process payment is not being done in the online shop side. It is being done in the payment service or the banking service side. So basically the online shop, all process payment calls something that is not existed in his own server, but it's existed in the other, in the other node. So that's the idea of how two nodes communicate to each other. By calling this kind of um, call, we call it remote procedure call. It's basically a function, it's basically a method, but it's executed remotely. That's, uh, this is how two different computers can communicate to each other. Okay, let's um, let's you know break down this kind of scenario into more detailed um, diagram. So the online shop we'll call the process payment method, right? And then the process payment method will somehow deliver the message, the arguments through the RPC client, which is located in the online shop server, RPC remote procedure call. And then the RPC client will send this message into RPC server, which is located in, in the banking or payment server, payment service server somewhere out there. And then this kind of message will be executed in the payment service server. If the process, the execution is success, the payment service will send again the message. Well, simply like success or failed or the credit card has expired or something, but basically those are the message. They will send another message to the server, to the online shop server. And then that's it. Basically, involving sending message and also receiving the message. So that's how um, the RPC being done and how two different servers, two different computers can communicate to each other through, you know, like um, one similar system which is you know online shop and payment system something okay well this is uh uh another details of remote procedure call ideally any remote procedure call any rpc should be designed 
as transparent as possible, as similar as possible with any function or local method that you're using in your program. If you're using Python, probably any function in Python that you are using locally should be quite the same. Similar concept and similar um, design with the RPC. So in this case, the RPC has transparency. It hides the location of the other server. So you don't have to know uh, where um, the payment service server is located, as long as you know what is uh, what the sentence to call them, how to call them, and then you didn't you didn't have to um, you know the, the 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 actual location of the circular itself. So that's how the RPC you know hide everything, and how the distributed system hides everything. It's called location transparency. Uh, so we just can, we 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 able to communicate everywhere anytime just by calling this kind of RPC uh, method. Okay, but in reality, there are many problems uh, that will affect this kind of call. Okay. What if the surface crashes during the function call? What if the online when the online shop call or call the payment service method at the same time the payment service is crashed? What happened? What if message is lost? The message is not conveyed, but message is lost somewhere in the in the middle. What if message is delayed? So. What, is, what if something goes, goes wrong between those kind of activity? So this is the idea that uh, triggered Professor Leslie Lampor to design the Byzantine general problems. So, so before, before Lampor uh, introduced the Byzantine general problems, there is one simple problem, one simple previous problems called the Chinese general problem or the two general problems. So we'll also discuss the Chinese general problem before we discuss the Byzantine general problem. Okay, so this is just the history. Uh, if you guys, maybe you 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 didn't you didn't you didn't know Corba, you didn't know Sun RPC. That's so old, but in today's uh, course, you will have uh, you ha you will have know the rest probably or Ajax. I think those are uh, most current and common technology that's being used by students to create any kind of web service nowadays. All right, so this is one of the example of uh, REST in Java, JavaScript. Well, REST is called, um, it's considered as RPC as well. All right, so uh, in enterprise system, this kind of RPC is bundled uh, into one big terminology called surface oriented architecture. SOA. And nowadays, there is this technology called microservices. Uh, maybe you will learn later in third, your third year or something. There's technology called Docker container, Kubernetes, that is uh, one of the latest technology in microservices that is also uh, inherited the concept of um, you know, RPC or distributed system in general. All right, so um, because different surface implemented in different language, you can use Python, you can use Java, you can use JavaScript, anything, any language, this kind of um, services is somehow to be language agnostic. So there, there, there has to be a language independent API. So whenever you use different language, this kind of um, services, this kind of architecture can still be um, you know, usable, can still be used uh, widely. All right, so this is one of the examples. Okay, any question in here? This first part, discussing how two different nodes can communicate to each other through this kind of, you know, called RPC, remote procedure. Any question before we jump into the actual Byzantine general problems concept? Yeah, I hope it, uh, I try to make it's not too technical, but still I have to introduce 
you guys with the notations of distributed system itself. But I, I assure you that this would be um, general or common knowledge, not that technical. All right, no question. Then let's go to, um, begin the second slide. Okay. Uh, the title is Models of Distributed Systems, but actually in this slide, we will learn about the Byzantine general problems itself. All right, so before we go to Byzantine general problems, let's learn this simpler scenario of the problem. It's called the Chinese generals problem or the two generals problem. Okay, uh, still these problems are related to the how two nodes communicate to each other in the previous um, slides. Okay, let's see here. Let's assume that uh, there are two different armies from the same um, side, of course. They want to try to attack one a city from different angle, from different angle. So one probably one one uh, one army will will attack from the south. One will attack from the north, probably. But the problem in here, those two army, those two armies, has to agree. When should we attack the city? Because if they are not attacking at the same time, well, obviously it will be failed, right? So how actually those armies can reach to some kind of agreement when to attack the city? So these are some kind of uh, you know scenarios. If army one does not attack and army two does not attack, okay, nothing happens. Oh, okay, just stay still. The city will stand as it is. What if one army decide to attack, but the other one does not want to attack? Army one will be defeated. It's also applied to vice versa. If army two decide to attack, but army one didn't um, want to attack, the army two will be defeated. So the goal, the objective of this problem is we want those army to attack at the same time so the city can be captured. Okay. Before I go into the next slide, any idea? Anyone want to share any idea? How can both army reach some kind of agreement whether they want to attack or not to attack the city? Well, obviously they want to attack the city, but the question here is when? Should we attack today? Should we attack later? How can we uh, reach some kind of agreement to attack the city? Anyone want to elaborate? Anyone have the idea how those two armies can reach some kind of agreement? Anyone? Uh, we don't we, we don't need to go into details of this you know, problem, but can you uh, we, we can just use our common sense. What if you guys become a commander of army, a general, and you have two different armies attacking some kind of uh, country in, from two different sides? How do you coordinate those two armies, assuming that there are uh, there are no like uh, you know like uh, complicated, sophisticated tech communication technology like today. It's like um, thousands years ago when you guys communicate through the, you know, sending message through uh, some kind of carrier, courier or something. Anyone wants to try? They send letters. Letters, yes. Simply by sending letters. And you have to send the letters, right? That's correct. So how we send it. Okay, there is one gunshot. Well, if those armies located in the, you know, not that kind of distance, well, you can throw some kind of sign or something. But if those army located in um, very, very far away, you cannot uh, send some kind of signal, right? The only um, method that you can do is sending the message. And you have to receive the message back before you can reach to some kind of agreement, right? That's the, uh, the idea. Okay, that's, that's the idea by sending the message. What if, again, 
what if this kind of a scenario happened? The general woman from the army one said, attack 10 November, okay? And then the general two agreed. But this message, you know, the response message is not going through. Maybe the enemy intercepted in the middle and killed the career, probably. That happened, right? So in this scenario, from general one's point of view, the first scenario is the same as his first message is not going through. So those, those condition up and bottom condition will the same, will result in the same. General one will assume that the message is not going through. Okay. So in terms of computer, when there are no response from the counterpart, the computer will not know whether which one, uh, which message is lost. Is it the, the first message that being sent or the second one, the response? So we cannot know. The system didn't know at all. So uh, what will general one do? Okay, so general one, let's assume general one always attack, even if no response is received. So uh, in this kind of scenario, general one probably will send lots of message. Let's not just sending one message because if we send one message, probably it will be intercepted and killed in the middle of the kernel. And let's just say send five or 10 message at the same time. If all are captured, still it becomes a problem, right? General two doesn't know about the attack. So while well, this kind of scenario is not expected, we don't want to be so positive and always attack, even if no response is received, right? This is not the scenario that we expect. Okay, the second one, General one only attack if positive response from general two is received. Okay, this is better scenario, right? General one is safe. But in this scenario, for example, the messenger from general one going through to general two and general two also able to send the messenger to general one. Okay, but <laughs> there is another problem in this scenario. General two knows that general one will only attack if general two's response gets through. Now, the anxiety arises in the general two's uh, camp. Whether the message being, I mean, the response sent by general two is going through to the general one. So, you know, in this kind of scenario, general two is in the same situation as general one in optional. So both options still create, you know, a critical problem that should be solved. Okay, so if there are no common knowledge, we cannot do anything about it. So the only way of knowing something is to communicate and reach the agreement or in the distributed systems terminology, it's called consensus. So we should reach some kind of consensus about the plan. Okay, let's implement this Chinese general problem into our uh, online shop application scenario in the first slide. Okay, so in this case, let's uh, assume the city is customer. So the online shop will dispatch the clothes or something, anything goods to the customer if and only if the credit card is charged. So the charging credit card will be done by the payment service. Dispatching goods will be done by online shop. How can online shop know that the, char the credit card has been charged by payment service? So this is the illustration of Chinese general problem in relate to the online shop application scenario. The same again. Online shop will not dispatch the goods if the payment service does not charge the credit card. But if both didn't do anything, nothing will, nothing happens. The online shop will be okay. The customer also will be okay. Okay, I, I, did, I didn't receive my clothes, because, but I also didn't charge my, I mean, the, the credit card also, it's not being charged. So it's okay for me. But how if, how if uh, the payment service failed to charge the credit card, 
but online shop feels that it has been charged. So it dispatches the goods. So the outcomes will, um, will not benefit the online shop. And so, and so um, the third scenario, if the online shop didn't dispatch the goods, but the credit card has been charged, while well, the customer will be upset. If everyone do their job, the online shop dispatch the goods and the payment service charge the credit card, customer will receive the goods. Everyone will be happy. The last scenario is the one, the objective that we should achieve. It is, it is the same as the general problems before. They have to reach consensus all together, so everyone will be happy. Okay, so online shop will dispatch the goods if and only if the payment is made. So this is the, uh, the first, you know, abstraction of the Chinese general problem into our distributed systems problem. Okay, now let's go into more complex scenario, the Byzantine general problem, the one that is uh, being simulated or that is being designed for supporting the blockchain technology. This is more complicated than the Chinese general problem. Okay, before we go into the details, any question on um, previous uh, material? If it, is, um, if it doesn't make sense for you, please raise your question. Uh, and yeah, let me clear those up before we go into details here. Okay, no question. All right. Professor Lamport come up with the Byzantine general problem because the problem is not only in the communication system. In the Chinese general problem or the two general problems, the problem can only happen if the communication didn't go as well or the consensus is not reached, probably because some kind of miscommunication, right? Sending message, I, I saw the, the message is sensible, but the message actually not uh, didn't sensible, uh, and so on. So forth. the problem is only in the message system. But in reality, there are one other problem that is being um, you know, addressed by Lamport in Byzantine general problem. What is the problem? The problem is some of the army, some of the generals may be traitors. This is interesting. We have, we have two different um, nodes, and one of the nodes can be traitors. Okay, before we go into detail, anyone want to elaborate? Uh, if you think about node or computer or something, and you, uh, someone say that, okay, some node can be traitors, what do you think traitors mean in the terms of you know, the nodes or computers core? Yeah, the computers in the distributed system. What do you think? What do you think they are traitors, for example? Any idea? How, how actually will Lampard come up with this traitor thing, you know, uh, when they actually talk about the computers and also the nodes within the system? Yep, hackers, yes, that's correct. One of the computer can be compromised, that's correct. Or any other idea? Any other idea why one of the computer, one of the node can be traitors for others within the system? Corrupt, yep. Uh, not corrupt message, but probably corrupt system. So it didn't produce the result correctly. There are several computers that is so corrupt, corrupted. So when we ask one plus one, they say three. Well, that's failed, right? That's not the correct answer. That also can be considered traitorous node or traitorous computer. Okay, so that's kind of scenario that Lampard come up. And this is the one that is, um, you know, nearly modeled the blockchain technology. 
uh, why the blockchain technology has been considered safe because blockchain technology has some kind of mechanism that if one or more nodes within the within the chain is compromised compromised by any means hackers corrupt system or anything the system will not fail they still can reach the consensus so this is the one that is also being brought up by Lamport in Byzantine in general so let's see now instead of having two different armies we have three armies they have to reach some kind of consensus to attack the city same problem how can they reach the consensus they can do it by sending message like usual like the chinese general problems one but again now the complication has been arise not only by the communication channel in which um, they can communicate uh, send, sending the message or not but also there is a probability that one of the general or more probably within the armies uh, may be traitors how do we can get rid of this kind of general and still carry out the attack successfully so that's the idea of um, byzantine general problems well for the rest of the slide i'm not talking about the solution but i'm talking about the problem itself. So in today's session, I will give you guys 30 minutes to discuss in groups what, what is the possible solution for this kind of problem. Don't, don't go into details. Please just use your common sense. You can browse or something, but just think uh, in common uh, approach, general approach. If this kind of scenario happening, uh, what should we do as a supreme general that is or the president that is commanding um, those generals in the field? OK, so let's see some kind of scenario. General one, as a supreme uh, leader, probably supreme general within the army. General one uh, issue the attack uh, command to all the generals. So general one say attack to general three general also say attack to general three. basically sending message broadcast message this is called broadcast message because we are broadcasting the message to all the nodes within our system but apparently in this case general two is traitors what is the traitor general can do it will reverse the command instead of sending attack to another general general two said retreat so can see here general one sent attack command to general two but general two said retreat to general three it's like just twisting the message from general one so from general three point of view the, that kind of scenario the general two twisted the message it is kind of the same with general one sending you know two different message one is sending attack and one send retreat message so from general three point of view um this is in indistinguishable so how can they reach consensus if those traitors existed within the system okay so in byzantine general problems there are these assumptions each general is either malicious or honest. Well, in our system, in our computer, we cannot trust everybody. We always assume that everybody can be malicious or can be honest, 50-50, because we don't know. Up to F generals might be malicious. There must be malicious generals. There must be malicious nodes, malicious computers within the system. How much? We don't know. Let's assume F. Honest generals don't know who the malicious ones. The malicious generals may collude with each other. Okay. Nevertheless, the honest generals will agree to the plan that is being, you know, reached within the system. But the general, the, the malicious general, the traitor general, might not agree with the plan. Well, they can do that, right? Okay, this is the theorem. This is the theorem. 
the, this term is come up from the oral message algorithm, but I will not discuss the solution by now. Let's not go into detail, but yes, there are problems. And one of the one of the solution is, you know, the blockchain, the blockchain introduced something, introduced something, so it can solve this kind of, you know, Byzantine general problems. Okay, one of the technique that is being used is cryptography, which is will be discussed by the second lecture in this UE Creates course. Okay. Now, how if we, uh, you know, uh, see these Byzantine general problems into the real actual online shop application scenario that we have discussed before? So there are three, um, you know, uh, actors in this scenario, online shop, customer, payment service. They want to agree on this kind of order, you know, yeah, clothing or goods or something. Who can choose whom? How can they trust each other that, can, that, that they have done their um, own job? So the order can be sent safely and everyone will be happy. So this is the idea. Okay, okay. Why, 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 why the Lampor um, use Byzantine um, terminology for this? You know, Byzantine, Byzantine is Constantinople. Maybe you, you have heard the history of uh, uh, the siege of Constantinople the siege of Byzantium by uh, uh, King, King Mehmed Fatih number two from Ottoman Empire. That, that is, this promise comes from that kind of scenario. Okay. So Byzantine or the Constantinople itself at that time is one of the center of civilization, uh, Eastern civilization. And it, it is very strong, whole, uh, very strong kingdom, but also have complicated bureaucratic and also corruptive system at the time. So this Byzantine or Constantinople has been used to model any bureaucratic complicated problem in every you know um, science, including computer science. Okay, so just introduction about the Byzantine. Why the Lamport introduced the Byzantine? Okay, so by this time. We can model this, or, or we can see the computer system models as, as follows. Okay, the two general problem, modeling the messaging system. So this is kind of a model of networks, how we should model the network's behavior. But the Byzantine general problems has one more aspect in it. Instead of only modeling the network's behavior, we can, we can understand that in this kind of problem, there are probability of a faulty node or treacherous or malicious node. So in this kind of problem, we also model node behavior. And in real life, both nodes and also networks may be malicious, may be faulty at the same time. So the Byzantine general problems is the one that is, um, you know, considered more um, representing the real distributed systems. Okay, so the assumption of the model of the system that we are discussing here, distributed system, is network behavior. Probably the message can be lost. Something. The second one the node behavior because there are probably compromised nodes, compromised computers within the system, or maybe they can crash all, all, all the time. And we didn't know which one is still alive, which one is crashed. And also the third one is the timing behavior or the latency. We should also model the, the latency or the timing behavior because what happened if the messenger is late. Well, uh, the attack is agreed to be carried out at 10 November, but somehow the messenger arrived at the second ten, second army at 11th November or at the 10th November. How, how can they reach the consensus, right? So uh, that kind of teaming behavior also being modeled by this kind of, of problem. 
Okay, um, those problems, uh, the first one, the first one, networks behavior. How can we see, how can we understand that the networks within the distributed system is problematic? Well, there are cases where uh, the undersea, um, you know, fiber optic infrastructure is being disrupted because sharks bite fiber optic cables, for example. On land also, um, it's not that safe anymore because some, some some people can dig the dig uh, many infrastructures uh, in the land is being buried uh, buried under the under the ground and uh, not only the fiber optic pi water what water pipe electricity also buried uh, under the ground while they they can have some kind of probability where where someone the the, the ground and you know cut the fiber optic itself so well the ground is also not safe. Okay, how can we model network behavior? Uh, well, we can assume that the network will only work point to point between two nodes. So we will have uh, this at least three different model network behavior. The first one is perfect communication network, perfect link or reliable. Okay. A message is received if only if it is sent. If someone sending the message, the message will be received. Well, this is the perfect scenario. The second one, we can have pair lost link. The message may be lost, but if you try to resend the message, eventually it will get to. Probably in the first attempt, it will be failed, but the second one will go through. Well, we still can have this kind of scenario, right? Fair loss link. The third one, arbitrary links. It can be reliable, it can be fair loss, but how if it is not safe? A malicious adversary may interfere with the message. Right, so uh, this three scenario can happen and always happen in real life um, communication networks. Okay, this is the network behavior. Okay, from fair loss to the reliable aspect, we can do the retry, whether there's this mechanism called retry or dedup, dedup, uh, duplicated message. It can, you know, somehow solve the loss or duplicated problem. And also for arbitrary one, if there is malicious adversary through the network, we can have this protocol called TLS, Transport Layer Security. Probably you will have the computer networks course in your third year, and you will learn about this TLS technology protocol. Okay, the second one is the node behavior. You know, the node can be treacherous. So there are one from these three following um, node behavior model. The first one is crash stop. The node is faulty if it is crash. After crash, it stops. So basically, if one node crash, it stops. It's called crash off uh, node behavior mode. The second one, there, there is um, this crash recovery scenario. A node may crash at any moment, but at some point, it will be restarted. And it will survive the crash. Recover. The last one is Byzantine node, fail arbitrary. So a node is considered faulty if it deviates from the algorithm, either crash or malicious behavior. It also considered as faulty, not only crash, not only um, producing different result from the actual one is also considered faulty. So this model is called Byzantine um, node behavior. Okay. So a node that is not faulty is called correct. In Byzantine general problems, the treacherous general is representing this kind of node behavior, the one that is not behaved correctly. It's called treacherous or malicious or, or faulty. Okay, last one, the timing. Okay, 
for either network and also nodes behavior model, we can have this time assumption. The first one is synchronous. So if you heard something like real, real time system, real time environment, real time scenario, real time application, this is where the latency is considered synchronous, where the latency of sending message is no greater than a noun approval. So basically the latency is very small and can be ignored. The second one is partially synchronous. The system is asynchronous for some kind of uh, message. But and mo most of the time it is synchronous, but sometimes some period of time so busy that it cannot um, respond within the, the, the small time limit or small latency. So it's called partially synchronous. The third one is considered asynchronous means we will ignore the latency at all. Our system didn't rely on the, uh, you know, the timing. So it can be sent anytime, anywhere, and the system can be, um, you know, running. So message can be delayed, delayed arbitrarily, uh, no timing, you know, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now for this, for the third uh, behavior model in here, the timing scenario, Maybe I want to ask some kind of question. Can you think about synchronous scenario in sending the message in your real life? In your real life, you do com uh, you you do a, a lot of communication, right? Can you mention one communication that should be done synchronously? What kind of communication? Bank transaction email. Email, okay. Uh, I will ignore bank transaction one, but I want to ask email. What do you think about email? Our one of the communication method is email, right? So do you guys, what do you guys think the email method? Is it synchronous? Is it partially synchronous or asynchronous? Email, email, the method of communicating through email. <laughs> marriage proposal needs to be synchronous are you sure well the girl can be delayed for a, a moment right? but but well yes we want to have synchronous scenario for marriage proposal of course but how about email email sending the email is it synchronous partially synchronous or asynchronous okay one of the students answer partially synchronous well yes for email we want we want our receiver respond it timing um, in timing manner, right? But if it delayed for one hour, two hour, probably he is busy or something, it can also be tolerated, right? Yes, that's called partially synchronous. Can anyone mention asynchronous method of communication? That is, well, you can answer it anytime, anywhere, and it still be tolerated. What if asynchronous communication? Anyone can mention asynchronous communication? Yep, recording YouTube, that's called, that's asynchronous. You can record one time and then you can listen anytime. You, you, you don't have to like listen at the same time. Let's go ask, okay. I, I, at least you understand the idea, right? So asynchronous, partially synchronous, and also asynchronous. All right, so uh, this is one of uh, violation of synchrony in practice. Why we can have synchrony or synchronous in real life? Because, well, occasionally there are message loss. Occasionally there are congestion within the network, busy, or probably some network being reconfiguration, reconfigurated. Okay, so yeah, this is basically the idea of uh, why we should model also the timing or synchrony model of two different nodes within the distributed system. All right, so for summary, I think this is the last one. Okay, this is just the example. I will stop in this system model summary because 
the time almost up. I will have some uh, discussion after this, so I don't want to waste any more time. So for the Byzantine general purpose, it will model three different behavior model, network behavior model, nodes behavior model, and also timing behavior model. And for this lecture, we will not discuss how to solve the Byzantine general problems that will be learned. You have to learn throughout this course. So by the end of this course, you will understand the blockchain technology, which is the blockchain itself solve the Byzantine general problems. So you will learn throughout the course. So by this time, I will convey this kind of idea that while there are problems in this world, in distributed system worlds, and this problem is modeled into Byzantine general problems. Okay. Okay, that's it, I think, for, for now. Any question? Well, okay. Any questions, guys? Uh, I believe these slides is available to you, to Telegram. I don't know. If not, it is available later in the in the LMS learning management system. And for now, I will have some activity for you. So let me stop by this one and share another one. All right. So can you guys go through this link? Okay, I think you don't have to log in. You, you can you can access this 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 page and also you can put something. Uh, the task is I will give you guys 20 minutes wait. 30 minutes. I will give you guys 30 minutes to discuss in groups. The question is, just think in common approach, how to solve the Byzantine general problems. Not the actual Byzantine general problems in distributed system, but think if, uh, if you are a supreme general in one country, and then you have several armies uh, besieging some kind of country or city. And you have to reach an agreement to attack those city. How can you do that? Given that probably there is one or two traitor general within your army. And also you can only um, send a message to communicate your plan. There is a possibility that the messenger being sent captured by enemy and so on and so forth. You can put any uh, assumption on your solution. Okay, so uh, I will have you guys work in groups of three. So there are 48 students, uh, not including me. So there are 47, so I should create. I will create a, a breakout room. And you guys have to discuss with your peers in the breakout room for 30 minutes. And after that, please post any result in here, in this Padlet award. And let's see what, what you have, um, what you've got with your peers discussion. And after 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. And after that, we will have one or two um, representatives to present the result. Okay, any question in here? No question? Okay, I will, I will, I will create the breakout room. Now, wait, breakout room should be 47, 75, no, 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 15. Maybe I will create 15 breakout rooms. You guys can have three or four. Uh, students in one room. I will assign automatically, so it will be assigned randomly. If you guys have now each other within your peers, please do first five minutes to, for, you know, uh, introduction, uh, inter introducing yourself within the peers, so you can know each other before the discussion begins. All right, so I will assign 
automatically create. Okay, it is. Uh, and also, please make sure you put your names into the Padlet post. Put your all of the members' name into the Padlet because I will somehow get the um, uh, evaluate your post and also mark the post for your course. Okay, so make sure you put uh, the names of all the members and also make it clear. Uh, I don't have any limitation of what you can post into the Padlet. You can write things in here. You can write something else and put the link in here. You can put only text. You can put diagram. You can put images. You can put videos, anything. I don't limit um, the materials that you can post into the Padlet. Anything you can think of. OK, so open all rooms. Please go to the back of Hey guys, please join with your peers in the breakout rooms. I will let you guys know if the 30 minutes time is up. Okay, there, uh, there are several students here. Four students, please join to the breakout rooms. Five more is still here. Oh, no. Three more. Three more is still here. Right, for anyone who's still in the main room, please join to the breakout room as soon as possible. So you can discuss with your peers in the group discussion. I will pause the recording for a while. All right, um, thank you very much for the discussion and I can see several answers for this problem. I will let, uh, I will open this Padlet until the end of the, you know, the end of the UI Creates program. You guys still can access and edit the Padlet until that time. I will not mark the solution up to that time. Uh, you can also comment to another post from another group. Don't worry about it. And what else? Uh, please put your um, complete name as you register to the program because later on I will have to mark the solution and also I'll have to give mark. And somehow you have to get the mark for my course as well okay so you can still edit it you can have discussion within the padlet but for now the last um, 12 minutes i will have two uh presentation volunteer presentation for you guys who have finished the work for now um and it not 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 for marking just for give some idea what you are um posting posted into the padlet and well, I will let you guys to edit it later on as uh, any, anyway. Any groups want to volunteer? Maybe two groups because we don't have much time. Any two groups? Okay, the first group who want to um, 
volunteer yourself. Please raise hand or open your mic if you want. If not, I will um, do some kind of random. Um, choose. I will choose random groups uh, using the picker wheel. But I prefer if you guys want to volunteer first. Anyone want to volunteer to explain um, your work? And uh, no, okay, because time is always stick. Time is ticking, so <laughs> let's go to the random wheel. Anyway, um, so this is the Zoom room that that is being used for today's course. So I will spin, and I will ask um, the actual groups from that room to present the work. Not don't, don't too long, like two three minutes is okay. All right, room number two. Who is from room number two? Room number two. I will, I will, I will check the room again. Okay, we're room number two. Erin Muhammad Faris bin Ahmad Faiz, Oi Sin Fang, who will represent your group. Can you please choose one of the members and present what you have? Yes. Uh, explain. So. Yeah, sure. Uh, what we came to the solution is that uh, the three armies will have to use fireworks. So if it's color coded blue, then you will have to retreat. But if it's red, then you attack. Um, and then we should probably send multiple uh, fireworks at the same time to increase visibility because the uh, weakness here is that if it's on a cloudy day, you can really see that well. Um, and then on latency side, if the each army is really far away from each other, then they need to like reach to an agreement of how long um, you should wait bef before defaulting to retreat. So default, um, if like if no one sends a flare or rather if only two flares. Uh, two sorry, two fireworks are seen. Then uh, you default to retreat. Okay. The assumption here is that uh, each army will not uh, like uh, betray each other. Okay, so no traitors. The assumption is no traitors. Mm, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Room number two for presentation. Let's give some, um, what's called a reaction. Okay, thank you so much. And um, you guys still have, you can still have edited your answer and some more assumption or anything else. I will not intervene, but uh, going, uh, going through the lecture up to the last lecture, you may have built some kind of additional knowledge. So your assumption can be added. So that's, that's it. Uh, I will mark this work at the end of the course anyway, not, not today. Okay, thank you so much for room number two. And the last one, last one group. Okay, I will choose one more group to present their work. And then that's it. We will um, close the session for today. Okay, that before before I, I choose the second one, uh, who haven't uh, put the name on the attendance list, please do it so. I'm going to... I'm gonna put in the chat again. Okay, so this is the attendance list. Please fill it up. Who have who hasn't um fill it up? Because well, yes, it, it is considered present if you fill the form within this time frame. Okay, the second one and the last one. The last one. Okay, group number four, room number four. Who is room number four? I have checked. Okay, Wong, Chozi, Kwei, Wei Ling, anyone who want to represent your group to present the solution for this case? From room number four? Okay, doctor. Yes, please. 
Uh, basically, we will use the process technology to solve the problem. And in process technology, we can uh, basically we will detect the incorrect information and it will ignore it. So we can make sure our information were sent to the correct person and incorrect way. Okay, I haven't seen your post or have you guys post your answer in the Padlet? Yes, total the first one. Oh, the first one. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any anything you want to add? That's all. Okay then. Thank you so much. Let's give reaction for group number four. Yeah. Um. And that's it. Five minutes before we close the session. Any question, guys? I will leave the Padlet for now. I will mark later at the end of the course. You can still discuss your solution you can uh, rate you can comment you can edit your previous solution and you can do anything and don't worry about it uh any question three four minutes before i close this session any question on this topic a question Okay, later on, when you have access to the learning management system of Universitas Indonesia, I will post the, uh, the Padlet link is, all, is uh, already posted there. I will post the recording session uh, there. You can see it again. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you very much for coming to today's session. Uh, are the attendance, as long as you fill in the attendance, by now, I think four minutes left before you can fill the attendance, you can, you will be considered present. So fill, fill the attendance uh, now, fill the, attend the attendance form now, because it will be closed in three minutes. If you fill, if you fill the form after three minutes, you will be considered not attending. So that's it. Thank you very much again for today. Uh, and see you again. No, see you again. I don't know. Yeah, see you again later. Thank you. Bye bye. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, I will close the room.